Hi, it's Dwyer. New Year's Eve, December 31st, 2018. Let's talk about Floyd Mayweather's brief return to the ring for his fight against Nisikawa. Now, I have the film of my fight, excuse me, of the fight in my favorites folder. You want to take a look at it. Let me just say this. Uh, older fighters have a problem with stamina, as you could imagine. Right? Older fighters often, more times than not, would lose to the prime, younger versions of themselves. There is a fighter who could beat Floyd Mayweather. It's younger Floyd Mayweather. Right? But let me say this. An older fighter knows how to do certain things, and on this video, you're going to see an A-plus left hook. It's the first knockdown. Right? What I want you to do, and this is called talent, what I want you to do is to look at the fight, freeze the frame, look how far away from his opponent Floyd is. And then just look at the suddenness by which Mayweather bridges the gap and throws a left hook that is straight out of the Diego Corrales fight. Right? That first left hook changes everything. His opponent, who looks like he moves awfully well, looks like he has great legs, right? Undersized, that's the secret to this fight. Floyd's physically bigger than his opponent, right? But his opponent looks like a great athlete. He's not a great athlete after getting hit with that left hook. Understand, it's a timing thing. Mayweather has the timing completely down. He might be older, but in the first round of a fight, he can put it all together to throw that left hook with suddenness, power, and accuracy. You have some big punchers right now. Errol Spence comes to mind who's a big puncher but who doesn't have this level of accuracy. As I've said with Mayweather, he's a freak athlete who also is a technician. Let me point out too that his opponent, who clearly never gets his balance back after that first left hook, his opponent actually makes adjustments. So you'll notice the second knockdown isn't a left hand. The second knockdown is a right hand. <laughs> Such is Floyd Mayweather, right? I'll just say this. Floyd's meat and potatoes, though, is that left hook. Forget the Diego Corrales fight. Look at the Ricky Hatton fight, where Hatton jumps in, unbeaten at the time, is never the same after getting hit with that check left hook that Mayweather threw. Here... Mayweather's on his front foot. Understand, Mayweather's a defensive genius, but when he's fighting Conor McGregor or this guy, right, MMA or kickboxer, he gives up his defense a little bit. He's on his front foot. He's coming in. He's actually trying to give the crowd a show, right? The problem is when you have an explosive left hook like this, that's almost impossible. I'll say... Errol Spence hits hard. There's no question about it. He doesn't hit this suddenly. He's not this accurately. He doesn't move into the pocket this quickly. I'll say this. The third knockdown. Yes, there are three. Is a left hook. Right? The corner of his opponent saw how dangerous... That left hook was, they threw in the towel, good for them. Hopefully tonight, the guy is able to talk in sentences. Let's talk about his opponent, too. You need to know that his opponent previously fought a former world champion boxer. And did you know that he actually KO'd former IBF world champion, I'm not Ruenrung. Right? Understand, Nasakawa... KO'd him. Nasakawa is actually a world-ranked bantamweight as a kickboxer. Don't be confused by his age, folks. He has a decorated amateur career. So this is a world-class kickboxer. 
did not make it out of the first round against 40-something Floyd Mayweather. Now, Mayweather has said, look, I'm not coming back. This is just an exhibition showing, right? One that, according to some reports, paid him $9 million. I'm not kidding, right? Well, let's just say, though, I support Mayweather in that he has far more to lose than any of the guys currently in the game. Understand, Mayweather is an unbeaten all-time great. There are very few guys who belong in the all-time great category. This is the rare one who is unbeaten. An argument can be made, too, that Rocky Marciano, and I think history undervalues Rocky. But many people are going to talk about the fact that Rocky Marciano beat some older fighters, right? Not that Archie Moore was ever younger in his uh, prime, but Archie Moore was older. Some other guys, Ezra Charles was a little bit older, right? Some people, Joe Lewis was older. So some people are going to say, look, you know, Rocky didn't really have one of the most distinguished reigns at heavyweight. By contrast, if you look at the Mayweather record, you're going to see guys like Diego Corrales, unbeaten, get stopped. Ricky Hatton, who I mentioned, unbeaten, get stopped. Heavier guys, Oscar De La Hoya, get beaten, right? Faster guys, Manny Pacquiao, yes, Pacquiao is faster than Mayweather. Mayweather beats him, right? So, in terms of comebacks, all Mayweather would be doing, in my opinion, is lending his name to the record of one of these younger lions, risking his legacy, right? I'm not kidding when I say when I was a kid, my dad would turn off the TV before they got to the part of the Rocky Marciano-Joe Lewis fight where Joe Lewis gets knocked out the ring. Right? Few people remember that Joe was washed up, that Joe had already lost to Ezra Charles, that Joe wasn't close to his prime. All we remember is Rocky Marciano beat Joe Lewis. That's all we remember, right? And Joe falling out of the ring. So if I'm Floyd, as great as he looked today, and folks, that first left hook is prime Mayweather. Right? I would realize that I was fighting a kickboxer, not a boxer. I was fighting a young guy right? who is going to improve and reach his prime down the road. I would realize that my stamina really wasn't tested in the first round here. <laughs> it really wasn't. Also, you know, the last time people saw Floyd in the ring, it was... A match against Conor McGregor where Floyd just clowns for the first few rounds of the fight. So no one really knew what Mayweather was bringing to the table. Right? If Mayweather were to sign a fight Terrence Crawford, Crawford would assume that the Mayweather stepping in the ring was the one capable of throwing that left hook, the first one. That quite frankly, even today in his 40s, would be one of the best punches thrown by any fighter in their prime in boxing, right? So I congratulate Floyd. He looked like, I'd say a million bucks, but he got nine million bucks. He looked like nine million bucks here, right? But boxing needs heroes. Boxing needs unbeaten all-time greats. Boxing needs a standard to strive for. Right? I, I love the idea of these heavyweights being able to look at an Ali, at a George Foreman, at a Lennox Lewis. Right? To me, that's what the sport's all about. So, count me among those who is grateful that Floyd gave us a great career and is unbeaten. Right? I know the welterweight division right now is loaded. I understand there are a lot of guys out there who want to make a big name for themselves. I understand guys are coming to welterweight to make a big name for themselves. Mikey Garcia 
If I'm Floyd, I show up for these fights wearing a shirt, pants, civilian clothes, waving at the fighters, understanding that I'm really a professor emeritus of the study of boxing, an elder statesman of the sport, right? As good as he looked, and folks, that first left hook, he could have been 27 when he threw that. It's that good. It's that accurate. It's that precise, right? As good as Floyd looked, and it's a dominant performance, right? He's not even breaking a sweat. He's laughing at times during the fight. As good as he looked, I hope he stays on the sidelines, right? I don't want future generations turning off the TV if Floyd is as unfortunate as Joe Lewis was fighting past his prime generations ago. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Take a look at the fight. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Happy New Year. Thanks for stopping by.